Hi, I'm Graham Mossman from Exasol and today I'm going to introduce you to the geospatial functions that are available with Exasolution 5. As usual, I'm going to keep this video short and keep it practical and so I'm going to introduce the main ideas and point you to where you can learn more if you want to. Firstly, the term geospatial refers to the science of describing geographical objects so that you can answer the question where in your analytics. In other words, geospatial is for when you want to analyse a process over space as well as over time. Geospatial objects are described by a hierarchy of data types, starting with a point, which is described by two coordinates, usually latitude and longitude. A set of points can make a linear string, and a linear string which ends at the same place it starts is called a linear ring. Then we can construct the most important geospatial data type, the polygon, which is a linear ring which might have holes in it. For example, within the borders of Italy there are two other countries, San Marino and Vatican City. When we talk about Italy, we are talking about a polygon composed of a linear ring with two holes, themselves polygons, within it. We can take this definition up a level by creating groups of points and groups of polygons. Exasol has data types for each of these, multi-point and multi-polygon. We can use these data types to represent maps of any given complexity. For example, we could represent the map of the United Kingdom at county level by simply creating a polygon for each county and then storing the set of polygons as a single multi-polygon and maybe also creating a multi-polygon for England, one for Scotland and so on. Geographical entities can be defined with great flexibility in this way. The whole of the UK is far too complex for demo purposes. Instead, I'm going to restrict myself to just one of the London boroughs, Camden. This has quite a complex shape, but in the database we can easily represent it as a single polygon composed of over 120 points. In this demo, I will also refer to the three fire stations which currently exist in Camden, and I will also imagine a fictional one in the southwest corner of the borough. First, I need to create a simple table to hold my demo data. Place name, postcode, latitude and longitude are stored in simple data type columns, but the geospatial information is stored in a column called GPS with a data type of geometry. Now I can insert Camden into my places table as a single 120 sided polygon. I can then insert the point locations of the three real fire stations and I can also create a multipoint called Camden Fire Stations which defines a set containing those three points so that I can answer some questions about all of the fire stations in Camden. Finally I define a point which is where I'm thinking of building a new fire station. Now that we have our data in the database we can start asking some questions. First, let's look at the stContains function, which allows us to calculate whether one geospatial object is completely inside another one. I'm going to use it to check that the point location of Camden Market is within the polygon representing the borough of Camden. I'm pretty confident it is, but stContains can prove it for me. In the same way, I can check whether Buckingham Palace is in Camden. The answer in this case is a resounding false. A reasonable follow-up question would be, well, how far is Buckingham Palace from Camden? I can answer this using the stDistance function to find the distance between the point location of Buckingham Palace and the nearest point on the edge of the polygon representing Camden. Note that in my example the coordinates are expressed in degrees of latitude or longitude, so st distance gives me an answer in degrees. I need to apply a conversion factor if I want an answer in kilometres. I can now demonstrate some quite complex questions. For example, what are the coordinates of the middle of Camden? The st centroid function is very useful for this certainly far simpler than manually working out the centroid of an irregular 120-sided polygon. For some mapping tasks it is convenient to draw a rectangular envelope around the area and we have a function for this called stEnvelope. 
Notice that our answer is a polygon with five points, not four as we might expect. The first and last points are repeated to emphasize that this is a closed shape. Now let's look at the fire stations in Camden. There are three existing points which we've stored as a single multi-point data type. How far away is the location of my proposed fire station from any of the existing fire stations? If it's too close, there probably isn't much point building a new fire station there. Well, I can simply use the ST distance function for this. ST distance is very flexible. It can calculate the distance from any geospatial object to any other. In this demo so far, I've shown it calculating the distance between two points, between a point and a polygon, and now I'm using it to calculate the distance between a point and a multipoint. The answer comes back that my point is over two kilometers from any of the other fire stations, so it might be worth building a fire station here. Let's imagine I have now built the fire station and Camden now has four. I can simply use the update statement and the stunion command to add the point location to the multipoint called Camden Fire Stations. This multipoint will now be composed of four separate points. So now I can run the same distance query and I get the answer of zero because now one of the multipoints is exactly at the location I'm investigating. Just to finish the demo, I can show that stunion can be used as an aggregate function. I can use it just like the sum function to create a set containing everything. In this case, a mixture of points, multipoints and a polygon. This demonstrates how you can build up any kind of geographical object you could imagine. To close, I want to emphasize that this has been an introduction. Our geospatial library is very flexible and built on open standards. You really need to take a look at the relevant chapter in the user guide to fully understand the extent of its functionality. Also, I use a single row insert to load the data for this short demo, but in reality you would probably use the standard bulk loader to load polygons and points, and then use stunion to construct higher level groupings such as multipolygons. In this way, large volumes of geospatial data can be loaded in a flexible way at the kind of extraordinary speed you can expect from ExaSolution. And that's all for now. As usual, www.exasol.com is the place to go for more information. I hope this video has inspired you to check out Geospatial and the other great features available in Exasolution 5. Thanks for your attention.